Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you the news you need to know and the know you need to use it. On Friday, November 15th, 1 a.m. Mountain Time, 2019. Let's just check, take a look at the models. Let's pause it. Wow. Certainly a fall to remember. We're having fall weather here. It's amazing. It's gorgeous out. But if you're in North Carolina... Look at the snow coming in there. Hello. That's coming in for your weekend. We have some snow moving into the Rockies. More snow for the Northeast. This cold pattern is not going to let up. It's looking like three feet where I live. Just buried on me. Right here on the 21st. Take a look at that. Different models have been predicting different things. We've ended the deficit. 7.4 magnitude downgraded to 7.1 thanks to the USGS with a minor tsunami in Indonesia. We'll get to that. Keep calm. It's boom time. New CMIP data suggests an extended period of solar decline for the rest of your lives and your children's lives and their children's children's grandchildren and so on and so forth. Are you picking it up? Cold snap of historic proportions hit East Coast with over 300 records falling, according to the Washington Post. But they didn't get it all down. Not so fast. Normal temps remain days away as record-smashing Arctic blast subsides. These are the facts. The Arctic blast that smashed hundreds of records across the nation since Veterans Day is easing Thursday, but a return to normal November temperatures remains days away, Diamond says. Almost 400 daily records, 370 to be exact, including record lows, record cold highs, and other thighs and schmies and lies have been set or tied this week, said Mark Chenard. Al Gore was nowhere to be found, a forecaster for the National Weather Service Weather Prediction Center said. Probably not. They probably didn't say that. From a standpoint of breaking records, the front has passed. Chenard told USA Today. But most of the Mideast and East and Schmeast and Texas and the Nexus of the Schmexus won't see temperatures returning to normal before next week, which is a tweak. And Diamond's a geek. Temperatures will recover across the eastern USA for the next couple of days. But that will be in a haze of lays and disgrace. And readings will remain below average for November. A November to remember, unless you're a warmest the National Weather Service said. Now, Chenard said 370 records have been set since Monday, which is a fun day and a lose day because it's the day before Tuesday. Hello. Are you stopping or are you shoveling? What are you doing? Record snowfall makes for early season snow day in Dearborn, and children still think it's Halloween almost a month after the fact. Matthew Campbell wearing his face paint to look like the DC comic character, the Joker, has no idea how that's affecting the snowflakes. Yes. Record snow. Powder party at Jay Peak. Rocky snow Saturday and Sunday, which will be a fun day. Early week storm brought snow to northern New England with up to 21 inches reported at Jay Peak. That's like a record day. The Rockies will get snow this weekend, just a little puff and a pass. And next week's storm could drop, <sighs> hello, meters in my region. Let's look at the, let's look at the video, Johnny. J Peak, Vermont, Tuesday, November 12th. Boom! Hello, are you living? Look at these guys, they're living. They're living it like it's middle of fall. In the Northeast, where they should never see snow ever again in their entire lives. That, that's a total sham. Because we've seen three consecutive years of record snow. Ho, ho, ho. Al Gore's a bow. It's no, no one's bow. Let me just adjust that. Look at these guys just puffing it down and taking it up. Taking names. This new snow mate. Uh, this new snow right here in Jay Peak brings the tally to 34 inches during the seven days from November 7th to the 13th. 
Here's your forecast through Friday. BC picking it up. Coastal Alaska and BC will also pick up some heavy density. That is your destiny. New England's going to get a little light dusting. The action this weekend will be in western Canada and southward along the spine of the Rockies. Many areas in BC could see over a foot of snow in lighter amounts. In the 1 to 6 range should fall in Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado. And let's just bring it forward to Sunday, which is your fun day in the Rockies, where you're going to be picking up a couple inches of powder in some regions, especially in the uh, northern mountains, let's say. Northwest Wyoming's the winner if you're a sinner. Get that lift ticket now. BC picking up over a meter of snow. And that coastal region is going to be pummeled. And this will continue through Thursday, all week, four days. More snow forecast for Western Canada, coastal Alaska, and BC. The Southwest could have a mystery hit. Yes, take a look. Southern Utah could be in the crosshairs, as well as the Rockies. New England's going to pick up a few more inches, and that could be cinches. That's your future. There's the future model. Northeast is going to stay chilly through the end of November. November to remember. Or forget if you're a warmest because the media won't talk about it. They stop talking about the record cold totals. It's completely out of the mainstream. More record cold Thursday. Stormy set up to develop. Hello, AC. Now, I know you have crackheads and murderers all over your streets, but there are also tourists you have to consider. And other people that look really pissed. Jesus, Christmas. I'm so glad I left there. Look how happy these fucking pricks look. Hello. It was another day with record cold. Meteorologist Joe Martucci goes through the full list and looks ahead to warmer temps. But they're days away, according to Martucci. The pooch. There he is. Look at this guy. He looks like me. Holy shit. What the hell is that? That's the widest flat top I've ever seen. What's going on there? Record cold in the south will be replaced with soaking, frigid rain. Wow, that sounds awesome. From record snow to record cold across southern Quebec. What the heck? A strong cold front will produce snow squalls across Mr. Quebec and eastern Ontario Friday. Into the early evening hours, hours of powers, temperatures will drop rapidly behind the front. Almost like a shunt. It'll just shut it down. The weak warm front is giving southern Quebec some very light snow late Thursday afternoon. Very little in the way of accumulation could be expected. The good news is that we can expect some warmer temps through Friday morning. It's going to be like up above 20. <laughs> That's not even funny. Because winter is holy. Five, six weeks away, folks. Six weeks away. And oh my goodness. It just doesn't want to work. Look at that. There's your models. A meter of snow in northern Maine. It's insane. All of New England picking up heavy snow. Uh, lake effect heavy. Michigan buried all the way down to more snow in Texas. Oh, my God. I wish I saved this. Locally heavy rain in southeast as coastal low develops. Snow in the Great Lakes. A developing coastal low will produce rain. Locally heavy, high surf, coastal flooding, and other fluxing after you just froze your ass off. Heavy rain along the coastal southeast may cause flash flooding. Meanwhile, another Canadian front system is producing additional snow across the Great Lakes and spreading snow into the northeast in fall. Still over a month and a half away from winter. Unless you're live out in another country. Magnitude 7.4 has been downgraded to 7.1. Earthquake in the Maluka Sea. No tsunami threat to Hawaii. Hawaii! There is a threat for uh, volcanoes erupting there, however. Indonesia lifts tsunami alert after powerful quake coming from Reuters. Jakarta, Indonesia Meteorology and Geophysics Agency said in a message on its Twitter account, just like the president, it has lifted a tsunami alert after a powerful earthquake struck near the Maluka Islands on Thursday. Pretty significant. Now, we've been calling for this seven magnitude or greater. We're in a four-month deficit, and it's not over. We still need three more babies to make us in equilibrium, which we could probably take an eight mag and a nine magnitude on the 
Oregon coast and still be at a deficit for seven mags. See how that works? Now, according to the official data centers, there has been tsunami information. Uh, the origin time, 1618 UCC today, coordinates 1.5 north, 126.4 east. This is just right on the equator. And the Maluka Sea. An earthquake with a preliminary mag of 7.1. No, that's not true. The preliminary mag was 7.4, and you downgraded it to 7.1. Occurred at the Maluka Sea, 1618 UTC, Thursday, November 14th. And additional tsunami observations were made. And down here we see gauge coordinates at 1.4 north, 125.2 east. At 1741 UTC, uh, 0.11 meter tsunami was detected. That's a half a foot with a wave period minute of 12. So no reports coming in on this actual tsunami that I could find or any video footage. And this is the final statement, the only statement about a tsunami in that region. So tsunami threats are off. Aftershocks are abundant, uh, as predicted during the normal type of geologic modeling. We should expect the seven magnitude to then be accompanied with, after the fact, uh, up to 106 magnitudes, 1,005 magnitudes. 10,004 magnitudes and 100,003 magnitudes. That's the model coming from geologic textbooks. And you can see that this is filling along quite nicely. The reduction in aftershocks is pretty standard and steady. This is a textbook 7 mag earthquake. And very few people were injured. That's the good news. The good news is we're still in a deficit for 7, 8, and 9 mag. Stunning photo shows lightning bolt striking an eruption, erupting volcano in Guatemala. And there you have it. Not really. Now, this photographer was there to do astrophotography of Volcan de Pacaya, which has rivers of lava emanating from the mini caldera above the cinder cone. Okay, so first, the Ukrainian president says Shut he felt up. no pressure on it. Please. Where was I? They expected clear skies, but that never happened, and they got caught in rain. And that was insane, because what they caught was the photo op of a lifetime. I have never seen so many lightning strikes coming from the top of Volcán de Agua. That is the volcano of water, he added, noting the event was life-changing. Well, it was certainly spectacular. Take a look at that. Epic. Now, what's going on? Let's just bring that down. Man. Take a look at what's going on over here. Satellite shows ash plume from Russian volcano streaking across the Pacific. We reported on this yesterday. Boom! There it goes. Hello. Shivalush to six miles. Volcanic ash advisory, remnant ash still present. <laughs> Sabancaya, Ducono, Nevados de Chilan. Now Sabancaya is still puffing to 25,000. That's not insignificant. And on and on we have volcanoes, which just do the thing. Bushfires in Australia being overplayed by the media. It's all your fault, folks. However, bushfires are frequent events during the warmer months of the year due to Australia's mostly hot and dry climate, which was wetter and much wetter during the centennial. Anyway, they're lying to you. It's normal. You want to know how normal it is? Come check out where I live. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight fires right near me, and we got smoked out tonight. Plus, there's dozens of other fires across the state. And if we look... The country as a whole, we have thousands of fires burning. The media is not reporting on this. They only report on it when it's about to hit some rich prick's house in L.A. There are thousands of fires affecting millions of people across the West every single summer. And as we head into fall, it gets worse. 
because the water stops falling from the sky. These are the facts. The facts are that wildfires are normal and you just haven't heard about it. All you people that just woke up a second ago are like, Oh my God, there are millions of wildfires. It's all global warming. Ah! This is normal shit. And most of it is triggered by the fact, especially in Australia, that the Democrats prevent the burning of the underbrush. Now, I don't know why leftists don't want to burn the forests, but when the forests light on fire, they want to blame it on you. Maybe it's a ploy. Let's let the forest smolder, and then when they light on fire, we'll say it's all the people's fault. And then we'll take their money and their votes, because we'll win. <laughs> I don't even know the ploy, but there is no ploy. The reality is that there are thousands of fires across North America, which normally occur. If you look at the statistics, wildfires in general have decreased by a factor of 50 times since the early, since the turn of the century, everywhere in the world, because we have more firefighters, more resources. We have planes that can put the fires out. Anyway, it's not HARP. It's not directed energy weapons. And Epstein didn't kill himself. And Congressman, what's his name? Paul Gosser dropped the bomb during the impeachment hearings when he put up like 32 independent tweets that he never tweets. But the first letter of each of his tweets spelled out. Can you guess it? Epstein didn't kill himself. Hmm. Why would you spend the time unless you knew something? Now, if you have had LASIK eye surgery, I apologize. It's a scam. Almost 100% of the people that have experienced this strip mall type surgery, which you can pay for for like 12 bucks, have gone blind, so to speak. It's a nightmare. Double vision. Anyway, can you imagine what type of surgery you're going to get in the strip mall next to the uh, merry-go-round that you think is going to be good for you? I mean, how gullible is the public? I haven't stepped into a hospital. The only time I've been there is during catastrophic injury of friends of mine, friends and family. And I had just had to step in there recently. And I'm talking to the doctors and they're like, why, why don't you like us? And I explained to them, well, because your facility holds all the most catastrophic, destructive diseases on the planet. Not only that, you're responsible for murdering people. And the entire facility is filled with all the infectious diseases in the world. Why the would I want to be in this hole? For any reason. And to listen to you quacks that have caused the epidemic of um, heroin addiction across the world because of your over-prescription of opioids and on and on. Where do you want me to can begin? And they fell silent, as they should. And they just looked at me like a maniac. And they wanted to prescribe me some opiates, I'm, I'm sure. Australia is drifting so fast, GPS can't keep up with it. You know why that is? Because the plate tectonic theory is dead. I haven't heard a wisp from it for decades. And riding the 3D seismic wave, we have tomography showing the inner Earth that is not prescribing to the standard model of uh, linear dynamics, of core, crust, outer crust, and all that bullshit. I mean, it just spend a second researching something and your mind will be blown. Do you ever hear the pillars of the mantle? It's just a tippy touch of the disinformation you've been fed. And if you pay for your children to go to university, you're paying like thirty to $150,000 for indoctrination. Now, if you want your child to die of cancer or some other inflammatory disease while he thinks he's saving the earth, well, go for it. Pay for him to go there. Get that good job. But I think the most important thing you can do for friends and family is to inspire your children to think outside of the box. The mainstream is the lamestream. It's been proven that the lamestream 
or the mainstream is controlled by multinational corporations, which have bought up all of your life. They keep you sick and they keep you coming back for more. Now, if you think this looks like an inner and outer core and there's crust and there's some kind of thing going on there, then maybe you have to start at the beginning of my videos because there's a lot you need to learn. Syria's Assad says Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. <laughs> maybe he knows something. The CDC warns of a new superbug threat. This has been ongoing for several years. Now, the CDC is saying every 15 minutes, someone in the U.S. dies from a superbug that's resistant to antibiotics. What do you think our future is? I just put out a video on the topic. Sunspot cycle minima and pandemics. The case for vigilance. I hope you watch it. It'll be linked below. A lot of people are pissed off about this. There are lots of thumbs downs. I don't know why. All I did was read the paper, <laughs> which is two years old. And I made the correlation between paleoclimatology because I'm a paleoclimatologist. If you're listening and you're new and you don't know that I'm a scientist, I am. Check me out on ResearchGate. I'm about to be publishing dozens of abstracts that are going to blow the mind of scientists worldwide. They're either going to run and hide or cry because they're not allowed to publish this shit I will publish. You know why? Because I'm not connected to a university and they can't stop me. You watch. Keep your eyes posted. The Roman maximum, the medieval maximum, and the modern maximum were the peak of empires. The peak of thievery, where the elites stole everything from the weak. The time is over, and we're going to get it all back if we survive and thrive. It's possible. We've done it every time. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance as trillions upon trillions of viruses fall from the sky each day and will increase for the rest of your lives. Solar activity and climate has been proven to be directly related as well as pandemic. We broke it down in the video. Now, some breakthroughs at the end of this podcast that I think you'll enjoy. Earth's odd rotation may solve an ancient climate mystery. Now, a geologic change may have plunged lush landscapes into arid zones, killing off an array of creatures. Now, this is a, an old time period. At first, it seems like a case of extinction by climate change, but they only wrote that because that's the narrative currently. So disregard that sentence. More than 160 million years ago during the Jurassic period, a fanciful menagerie crept, swam, and flew through the cool, damp forest of what is now northeastern China. But what they've determined in this paper is that sometime between 174 and 157 million years ago, that's a huge window, the whole region shifted. Now, they want you to believe it's gradual because it's all about gradualism, just like evolution. It's all bullshit. Everything is catastrophic, episodic, and cyclic. And we've proved that since we've started the channel. There is nothing gradual about anything except the end of the empire because it's going to happen in your lifetime. Most things are geologically instantaneous, which means if it happens in 100 years, you cannot tell in the past, in the future. It will look like a, a blink, a blink of the eye. So geologically instantaneous may seem slow to human life, but it could take three generations. And now what happened in this time period from 174 to 157 million years ago is the crust slipped. The whole region shifted southward by a startling 25 degrees, plunging once lush landscapes into zones of desiccating heat. 
So what we've just discovered is scientists are not are now willing to reveal the truth. Crustal slip during the Jurassic. Boom. Are you picking it up? I hope you got something out of the video. Look into heart math. Start stretching. Consider yoga. Change your diet. Research micronutrients. Check out our store. All the supplements are in there. Don't be scared. Be prepared. Preparewiththeranch.com Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. At some point, the tsunami warning will not be lifted. Are you ready?